to measure phosphate using the hammer checker, I've got a little box like this. Inside, you'll find an instruction manual, your phosphate checker, and two glass cuvettes with caps, and a package of reagents. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Follow the instructions of your volunteer coordinator for the health and safety precautions you should take. We have a look at the reagents here. You see there are two symbols. This one tells us that the reagent can be toxic to the environment. This one, that it can be toxic to humans. So take extra care when handling this reagent and definitely wash your hands when you get home. Take a phosphate measurement, start with your cuvette, take the cap off, pour in a little drop of your sample. Pop the cap back on, shake it to rinse the cuvette, then empty it out on the ground away from your sampling area. It's just river water so you can empty it on the ground, then repeat that three times. When you're ready to take your sample, fill the cuvette up to the 10 mil line. Then pop the cap on. Then using a cloth or some tissue, Give the outside of the cuvette a little bit of a wipe down to remove fingerprints and then try and hold it by the cap. Switch on your phosphate checker by pressing the black button and wait until it says add C1. Then pop the lid off and insert your cuvette. Shut the lid and wait. Now the checker is zeroing, so it's looking at the colour of your water and setting what the zero point is. Wait for the flashing lines. Sometimes this can take a little bit of time, but just be patient. Then when it says add C2, this is where you can add your reagent. So pop the cuvette out. And take your reagent packet. Now inside here is lots of little pa uh, flakes of powder. These little packets love to blow away in the wind. So take extra care when you're using them. There's a number of different ways that you can get the reagent out of the packet. If you have some scissors with you, there's some lines along the edge of the packet telling you where you can cut. If you fold the packet into a triangle and then cut along those lines, then you end up with a little spout. You can also just rip the corner off and try and flick it all. Um, obviously the scissors that you use, don't take them home and use them in the kitchen. These little packets love to blow away in the wind, so make sure you've got a waste bag with you, put them in a pocket, pop them under a stone to stop them blowing away. Then when you've cut open the um, packet, you can open it out and make a sort of spout. Oh, it's a bit tricky. And inside you can see the white powder that's our reagent. Taking extra care, take the lid off your sample and pour that into your sample, trying to get as much as possible out of your packet. If you've got a little spatula, you might want to scrape that in, but obviously reserve that for this purpose then get the lid back on as quickly as possible. Put your powder packet somewhere safe to stop it blowing away. And then shake 
for two minutes to dissolve the sample. After two minutes, all your powder should have dissolved. You shouldn't be able to see any more um, little flecks of powder in your solution. If the water's very cold, it tan can take a little bit longer to dissolve, so give it a bit more of a shake until you can see that the liquid is clear. If you do take a little bit longer to get the powder to dissolve, you might find that your Hannah checker turns itself off, in which case you need to start um, again, but keep hold of your one with the powder in and fill up the spare cuvette with river water to do your new blank. That's the reason why there are two in the box. But for me, my Hannah check is still on and my powder's all dissolved. Next thing to do, give it a little bit of a flick to try and get rid of the bubbles that are formed during the shaking because they can interfere with our measurement. And then give the outside of your cuvette a really good wipe. Then open up your Hannah checker, check that it says add C2, close the lid and then press and hold. Then your countdown for three minutes starts. Okay, last few seconds on our countdown and then we wait for our reading to appear. Today we've got 0.47 ppm phosphate in this uh, watercourse. There's been a lot of heavy rain in the past few days so I expect a reasonably high value. So um, I'll put that in my EpiCollect app later on. I'll scribble it on a piece of paper now so I don't forget. Next thing I need to do, switch off my phosphate checker open the lid and then clean out my cuvette. I've brought a waste bottle with me so I can put my uh, used sample in it. I don't want to dispose of the sample with reagent in it onto the ground or into the river. So sample goes into my waste bottle. Then I'll take that home and follow the instructions of your volunteer coordinator on how you dispose of that. And then to clean out my cuvette, I'm going to use some deionized water because I have some with me. If you don't have any deionized water, don't worry, you can use tap water. But again, just like you did at the beginning, little dribble of water, tap on, give it a shake and into your waste bottle because there might be tiny traces of reagent in there. Do that three times. Tap on, shake, into the waste. Last time, whoops, sometimes if you've got a big bottle you can end up pouring it all over yourself, so make sure you've got a cloth to dry off. Into the waste bottle. Give it a little bit of a wipe down afterwards and leave the cap off so it can dry out. When you get home, it'd be worth opening the lid of your case so your tubes can air dry. And with that, pack up your kit, ready for your next sample. If the weather's terrible when you're doing this, you might not want to be getting the packets out when it's pouring with rain or if it's really windy. Try and do it as soon as possible after you get your sample out of the river. Try and find somewhere a little bit sheltered. Um, but your safety and comfort is the priority here. So look after yourselves and thanks for collecting phosphate measurements.